There are very few virgin forests left in North America. Old growth wood is hard to find, and in many cases, it is protected from logging. But now, there is a new source of old wood, and you don't need a chainsaw to harvest it. Peter Standring takes us to Canada's Ottawa River, where a cash crop is being recycled from a watery grave. They were the great highways of the Canadian wilderness, rivers that sliced through the forests, carrying timber to the rest of the world. The Ottawa River was a key expressway for the logs. Along the banks of the Ottawa and its tributaries today, you'll see fertile farmland long since cleared of the ancient forests. But remnants of those old trees are still here. You just have to look in the right place. Every time you pull up one of those, there's a lot of history. A small company called Logs End is harvesting that old timber. We're getting old growth timber virgin, beautiful colors, and we're not cutting a tree down out of the bush. Their ancestors did all the cutting. For almost two centuries, the Ottawa and its connecting rivers, like the Coulange, were the arteries of a booming lumber industry. Trees were cut down by the thousands and floated downstream to the St. Lawrence River for export. And in one season, like they had the 300 the records show there were 300 million cubic feet of square timber were rafted down, which would be equivalent of a 12-inch board, one inch thick, to go around the world three times. That would be the amount of lumber that would be cut in one year. The loggers were a very dangerous life, particularly uh, on the river drives. They didn't learn to swim. They lived on the river. They worked on the river, but they couldn't swim. If they couldn't grab a log, they were gone. By the time the log drives ended 10 years ago, the industry had not only lost men to the rivers, but countless logs. Logs End is pulling up about 15,000 logs a year, each one roped by a diver and hauled to the surface individually to minimize riverbed disturbance. And there's such a huge part of history here that I really enjoy the history aspect. You know, we're re reclaiming logs that loggers that had cut down in the bush and pulled by horse to the closest stream and taken down the stream, put on the Ottawa River, and a tremendous amount of effort of work that went into getting these logs into the river, and then they got lost. The wood has been well preserved in the dark, cold water. Recovered logs are cut into planks while they're still wet. Here we have a uh piece of commercial pine. The, uh, the growth rings on the end are a lot further apart than the, uh, the reclaimed or old growth. But it means that uh, the furniture that we make, the lumber is 20% more dense. The advantage is because it's more dense, it's less susceptible to dents. Uh, so you get stronger furniture with uh, resistance to scratching and they treasure the story behind the wood nearly as much as the quality. You feel it when, uh, when you work with it, you feel the history. The wood is special, it's the only way that you can get old growth wood with no harm to the forest. Uh, one of the things we're doing, we're capturing that history and uh, we're able to put it into someone's home now. One day lumberjacks are cruising the Ottawa River. This time they've traded their axes for scuba gear. Just what are they up to? Here's a look below the surface of lost logs. Great dive. A lot of, after going over that place about twice, still a lot of nice logs. Deep below the surface of the Ottawa River, there's a new breed of lumberjack at work. They're not cutting logs down, but raising old-growth timbers that slipped 
from beneath log booms years ago. 10% of the trees cut by timber barons like J.R. Booth ended up on the bottom of the river in the 19th century. And that's interested Ottawa entrepreneur Gord Black. There was a huge fire in Ottawa in 1905, so there's a lot of history involved. J.R. Booth stopped taking any logs at the mill in Ottawa while he continued to cut logs in the bush and run them down the river. And after a period of time, sitting for almost two years before they were sent to the mill, they got waterlogged and, and sank. So after a hundred years sitting under the water, why isn't this wood rotten? The reason the logs don't rot is uh, no oxygen, very lack of oxygen, cold water, uh, no sunshine. They're basically hidden down there. Each log still carries the brand of a baron, and the number of stamps on the end tells you where the log was from and what year it was cut down. The first thing Gord needed to do was to find these lost logs. We got an idea where we would expect to find these logs in history by the use of archives. Once we'd located what we considered uh, quantities of wood, we did side scan sonar. It is pretty precise as far as telling you the volumes you can expect. And you can do wide areas with side scan. Scuba diving was the way to go, not only for efficiency, but to actually rope and lift the logs. Dragging them on the river's bottom would have caused environmental havoc. Once it's cut, the wood must go through another drying process, a different secret recipe for each type of wood. This is done in a kiln, but the exact temperatures inside are a trade secret. The end product is a wood with a unique strength and look. This is old growth timber that grew under a very thick canopy 150, 200 years ago. And uh, when it grew, it grew very slow. So the rings are very, very tight and very dense wood. Who would have thought that some of J.R. Booth's original logs would have made it back into his estate over 100 years after it was built? Booth would surely have been a satisfied customer. Welcome back. This tugboat dates back to the 1940s, to a time when the Ottawa River here was one of the mightiest logging rivers in the world. There's certainly not much to see of those days anymore unless you look underwater. It's exciting. Every day you don't know what you're going to find. It's basically like treasure hunting. This is Gord's buried treasure. Tens of thousands of saturated logs resting in the silt of the Ottawa River. Most of them have been lying here preserved in the deep cold water for more than a hundred years. Gord's company, Logs End, is determined to bring them back to the surface. How many logs have you taken out so far? 30,000. Wow. Of course, Gord doesn't pull up 30,000 logs by himself. His salvaging company involves a crew of 22. It's long days and hard work, but the results are worth it. It's exciting for everyone, from the divers to the, the students on the boat, the full-time workers in the mill. It's just, hey, guess what we got? Patty, look at this. Red oak. Just last week we found six oak that were registered 1873. Super. And you recapture a log like that. Now that was cut in the bush over 125 years ago. You, you can think back, you know, is that lumberman looking down on me saying, thank God you recovered my log? Yes. The logs that sank to the bottom of the river are just a tiny fraction of the 14 billion logs that were floated down the Ottawa River since the 1830s. This river is one of the oldest logging rivers in the world, and uh, this was a highway for lumber. They were going down in, in booms of 10,000 in a boom uh, at that time. What did this actually uh, pull? In its day when the logs were floating, this would pull a couple thousand logs. Wow. That's a lot of logs. Gord's been fascinated with logging since he was a kid. Born and raised near Bristol Mines, Quebec, the Ottawa River was right in his backyard. Do you remember the logs floating down the river? As oh, yes, certainly. I can remember coming down to swim in the river and there'd be log booms where you could almost walk from shore to shore with booms of logs, thousands and thousands of logs. 
How would you like to drive her, Wayne? You bet I'd love to. Well, thank you, Skipper. Take it over, Captain. Although Gord grew up in Quebec, he spent most of his adult life a few miles downstream on the Ontario side near Ottawa, where he and his family own a successful electrical contracting business. But he never forgot his roots and the people he left behind. I left this community very young, at age 16. I had gone away, did my thing. Now I started coming back to spend my summers here in my community and had a local cottage and, and saw a lot of people around here, a lot of friends, and I thought I'd like to be able to put something back into my community. That was 1997. Since then, business has been good enough for Gord to build a state-of-the-art sawmill on site. The quality of these old retrieved logs is so good, most of this lumber will be used for flooring or cabinet making. It's wood quite unlike what you'd find in our forests today. They're termed old growth because they came from a century ago, so the rings were very tight in the log and uh, the knots were very small. When you say old growth, they, they were cut 100, 125 years ago, but how old were they at the time they, they were cut? Oh, some of the logs we were uh, looking at, uh, similar to one oak we were looking at this morning, uh, it's probably 350 years old. Let's go find some logs. I think that's a good idea. That's what we're out here for. Glad you could join us this evening. It's great to see you once again. Thanks for being here tonight. Well, Kath, I think our friends at home are very familiar with the rich logging tradition of the Ottawa Valley. That's true. The great stories of the rivermen and the mills who basically built our region. And you know what's great? There are more stories still lurking beneath the waters wow. of the Ottawa River. And thanks to a group of hardworking lumbermen, they're coming to the surface. Beneath the waters of the Ottawa River lurks a story of intrigue, mystery, and entrepreneurship. You see, some time ago, between the years 1880 and 1956, it's estimated some 13.5 billion logs were floated down the mighty Ottawa and its surrounding waterways. It wasn't uncommon for loggers to lose as many as 5% of their drive per year. It was fantastic what our pioneers accomplished uh, and the sacrifices they made to accomplish it. The clearing of the land, uh, these clearing of these forests and, and getting our economy going and uh, they, would, they were able to take logs down streams that you couldn't get your ankles wet in the summer. Uh, they dammed every little pond, every little lake, every little stream they could to get these logs down. In the spring they were just torrent raging rivers and the amount of life that was sacrificed uh, we're going along rivers and, and uh, along the Ottawa but along some of the tributaries like the Black River and the Des Moines River you look up and there's a cross here and there's a cross there and you know what it meant it was the river drive when we take out logs and we look at them and it's got a a, a J.R. Boo stamp or a McLaughlin stamp on it. We think back, now that's a beautiful log, it's probably 20 inch diameter or, and it took a lot of work first of all to get out there and cut that and with the axe and then the crosscut saw and then drag it to the stream, float it down the stream, down the river. A lot of work went into it and at the same time we look at it, some guy sitting up there way up on a chair saying my lifter and they got my log and it's at the mill. <laughs> <laughs> After a hundred years, <laughs> it finally gets there, so his work wasn't lost. 